Namaste and a wonderful Shubharadri to all of you. My name is Prash K from Urban Spirituality. This is another episode of A Walk on the Wise Sideshow and we are honoured to have a very special guest with us who shouldn't really be in the UK right now but she just happens to have been pulled and yanked into London to deliver an excellent workshop, something that she does globally and we've been very fortunate because she's just spent the whole day delivering this so we figured we'd catch her at the end and <laughs> have her share some of her very sharp insights in the world of yoga meditation and spirituality she is the director of the international renowned himalayan school of traditional yoga she is also the president of the acd act global charity foundation which does work across the world to help and uplift youth children and all people in terms of spiritual and social activities. She's also a originator of the Mohanji Foundation. She happens to be the wife of the great renowned spiritual teacher Sri Mohanji. And on top of all of that, somewhere in addition to being a wonderful Dharampatni, a wife, a mother, she is also attending and regularly speaking at peace events internationally, including the world religion. Uh, including the Parliament. council in the council Parliament. Of, the Parliament of World Religions, which is globally renowned, and still she has time to come to London. So we're delighted to have her. Please show your respects for the wonderful Lady Moore. Oh, wow, thank you. Very, very sincere there, and beautiful intro. <laughs> it was with the heart, Debbie. I, I, I want to ask you this because you have so many years of yoga teaching, training experience. You've learned it yourself. You've decided to take a path which takes you on many different types of yoga, many disciplines of yoga, and yet this was not the life that you lived originally. And you, you come from a, a war-torn country. Tell us a little bit about how that childhood led you to the path of yoga. Um, well, it did start with a whole lot of pain, uh, agony, loneliness, sufferings, <laughs> so it was not a really beautiful story to start with uh, but there was a crucial moment at which there was an inner awakening and um, I, I just felt it was like the phoenix, the phoenix bird that just rose up from the ashes and uh, a moment when I was a 14 year old girl and I decided that I will not live a life of a victim uh, I will uh, do what I can to raise up from this situation and I recognized education as the way out so I started studying with the torchlight under the bed cover in a room where there were no windows. And within two weeks, I became the best pupil in the last year of primary school. But this was with a war going on. Oh, well, yeah, there was a conflict at that time between Croatia and Serbia, and we became refugees overnight and ended up in Serbia, where we've never actually been before. <laughs> or we, even though ethnically Serbian, we never went to Serbia, right? So there was nothing to hold on to. There were no. Uh, support groups, relatives, you know, uh, so you were just out strangers there. in, yeah, Mer on the, to surrender to the mercy of the new territory where you're supposed to adapt, and there were financial crises. So in the midst of all that, you feel like you've just been uprooted, and you've been just thrown into this uh, complete insecurity and despair. Uh, but in the midst of all that, there was this moment where. Something happened, I, I can't really put it into words, but it was from deep within the firm decision that I'm not a victim, you know, and that led me to uh, on my own path of empowerment and seeking for opportunities uh, and opening up to the possibilities, right? So it's just the realization that came, I was quite young, 14, but it happened to me that I realized that when we start vibrating in a different way, we actually change our reality. It just has to happen organically from within it's not a theory in the mind right so sometimes life's life puts us into the painful situation so that it really okay. organically happens right. that you know from it's i guess the meaning of the suffering is to really you know reduces your ego and then the awareness sprouts out and it's just so when something happens to us genuinely from the level of awareness it's ours we own it you know we own it and we vibrate it and it becomes real it's not a theory degree in peace studies continuously pursuing my my dream of empowering myself through education but there was a point where I realized thanks to Babaji that education is not really what I'm searching for 
um, because there is a point in education where we start losing our connection with our truth, right? Uh, we start um, buying into the story of the society and the comfort zones. Uh, we compromise our values, right? right? So in order to uh, advance ourselves in our careers, very often we compromise. Yeah, it's like education so, for the sake of education. Yeah, so it's like you want to kind of show off a little bit with your education, your eloquence, your erudition, the, you, know, you know, so you start quoting this one, start quoting that one, and um, at some point um, you're not the one who's bringing something fresh and new, you're just parroting, you're just parroting others, right? Yeah. You're trying to see what works in the world and you imitate that, but this is not why we came here. We, we have come here to bring the fresh new expression of divine consciousness, not to imitate, right? So at that point, I realized that um, what I uh, would like to achieve is the vertical connection to the Supreme Consciousness, where I become an instrument of downloading certain fresh new ideas, or maybe ancient ideas and knowledge, but in a new way that is applicable that is to the to current, relevant to the current uh, world. Uh, so that's where it clicked with the autobiography of a yogi, we mentioned last time. And after reading that book, it just, completely demolished the world of my <laughs> future career, education, the whole thing. I finished my master's degree because it was important to do that. But my inner compass went towards India, yeah. Kriya, master's, yoga, uh, uh, establishing the connection with the higher consciousness. I didn't know how I was going to do that and which technique am I supposed to choose from the myriad of so many techniques and paths. But I trusted and I believed that the right techniques will come my way, the right master will come my way. So I started. And I got a job in Dubai, which was only one hour away from, by flight from India, one hour and a half. And that was it. That's where it started. So I had a couple of uh, teacher training courses in yoga. And uh, with, uh, with yoga um, and also Kriya practice, it started happening, uh, especially it accelerated after meeting Mohanji, <laughs> who was uh, brought to me through the grace of Sai Baba, the great, great avatar and master. So um, in, in the end, uh, with Mohanji, I kind of closed the full circle, and um, I felt um, the, the real empowerment came to me through Mohanji because he doesn't pamper my ego. He's not there, he doesn't have a second agenda, right? He doesn't. Uh, shy away from scolding me when I need to be scolding or for supporting me when I need to be supported. And it's a, it's a beautiful relationship in which uh, I'm allowed to be myself. Right. Right? I'm not here to pretend that I'm holier than thou, wife of a master with a certain facial grimace that's supposed to convey right. holiness or any, any, any type of imitation of anybody. I'm, I'm allowed to be me. I have my own expression. And... Um, one of the expressions, for example, is this conscious dancing. I've always loved to dance. I like to bring supreme energies through the movement of the body. So yoga, dance, uh, inner freedom, being authentic. This is what uh, really makes me uh, spread my wings. <laughs> well, let's talk about spreading your wings for a second, because um, in the, the, the most proliferated conception of yoga in the modern world is the image of people stretching and doing stuff in the gym or in a yoga studio and the notion of yoga is very much that is the definition that most people carry that it is uh, a mixture of exercises and postures and yet actually there are many different types of yoga hatha yoga bhakti yoga there are so many different types of yoga that many people don't even realize can you just share your thoughts on why do so many different types of yoga exist what, what is what is the purpose because it's surely a lot more than just stretching in, in, in a yoga studio well, um, yoga is a way of building your muscles, stretching, um, impressing others with your tight pants, your super sexy body, and... Uh, <laughs> I hope you're listening, guys. All this that, is not what it is. All that is not uh, yoga, it's marketing, right? So I, I see uh, quite many yoga ads, it's always a super sexy girl, right? And uh, it's really like, you know, for me as a mother and as a woman, I find that kind of insulting almost and, uh, and it's not what yoga was supposed to be right. now I don't I don't say that I'm supposed to be fat and ugly I mean, of course not but uh, mm -hmm. you achieve uh, the beauty of your body not just the physical beauty but the inner radiance Inside. and uh, the connection with the consciousness 
uh, through practicing yoga regularly and living the values, you know, the, the yamas and the niyamas. So there's a whole uh, spectrum to yoga, which is not just the asanas. So asana is only one of the eight limbs of yoga. Uh, so um, I, I noticed, for example, a big change in my yoga practice when I do charity initiative. So that's karma yoga path, right? That's the, the path of service. When I listen to beautiful songs, like, uh, for example, Love Krishna Das, he's one of my favorite uh, singers of uh, bhajans and kirtans and uh, devotional music yeah so uh, i love music and i love music in sanskrit language it's completely different feeling when you listen to a song in sanskrit and then some in, other language in english so sanskrit has that vertical uh, dimension so for example in conscious dancing which we did today i've used different other songs uh, for the lower chakras and uh, but once we reach the higher chakras it's Sanskrit. No, no other song comes close, you know? It just doesn't even come close to the songs in Sanskrit. Which is like, I just simply love uh, the Vedic tradition and I love the ancient uh, yogic teachings because uh, the beauty of the uh, bhakti that comes and the vibration that comes through that language and through everything that was taught the way the ancient sages and right. masters taught it, it all kind of brings the uh, oral uh, holistic dimensions, so service, pure intentions, being authentic, expressing yourself, wanting to really help others and serve others. And it's, it's importantly, when you teach yoga, I always tell all the yoga teachers, you're not here to invent new yoga. This is the myth of the West, right. SOP, you know? Like, what is your SOP, you know? What, what is the, um, no, not SOP, sorry, USP, unique selling, selling point. point. What is your USP, you know? So that's what gives, you know, gives you the edge, and then you do yoga in the spa, you do yoga half naked, you do yoga with the animals. I think they do beer yoga now as well. Yeah, Some crazy balance and drink beer, then balance and sip and burp, and then balance again. Oh, crazy. Goodness, uh, I mean, all these ideas are coming only because they actually are not authentic. They're not yeah. getting it. They don't understand what is the point of yoga. So it's just uh, entering the bandwagon of something that's popular. But the fortunate time is that the global consciousness is rising and yoga is not popular because it's done with beer, animals, or tight pants, or naked. Yoga is popular because it actually shifts your consciousness. Right. And it's so needed in the time when the globally energies are rising. There's never been a greater time to do yoga than today. And um, actually we are all connected, interconnected, you know? When we have a pet, we realize the pet becomes the member of the family. You know, uh, people in India, they honor cows so much. I mean, the cow is like a, a mother to the family's uh, feeding and, and each part of her body is just like bringing beauty, beautiful energy, beautiful products out of herself. So we have to honor the nature, connection with the nature, with the animals, with the, uh, all the products of nature, the food. Uh, but we are not bringing any lower energy through yoga practice. It is impossible. Because yoga actually changes the energy blueprint in the body. When we practice yoga, we naturally move towards ahimsa, the non-violence. And uh, even killing animals and uh, consuming animalistic products becomes repulsive. If you just keep doing yoga, you will by, by default become first probably vegetarian, then vegan. Because now knowing what happens to the poor cows and calves and bulls in this dairy industry, it's... it's, it's absolutely cr absolute cruelty from our end so uh moving into non-violence is the step one <laughs> i mean it will happen to you because you start feeling the prana more you start connecting with the life force energy filled with love so life force love makes your being expand includes others you're not feeling yourself separate anymore and you want to do something that's beneficial for all so you don't want others to be killed because of your own uh, uh, comfort, you know? You don't want others to be tortured because of your comfort, and you want to do only what is good for others. So this is the result of yoga. Uh, but most important is yoga prepares our body for higher vibration. It literally works on the nadis, you know, which are closely related, uh, translated as meridians. They're much more than meridians. Right. So let's say we have 72,000 of these nadis all, all over our aura. The flow of prana through the nadis increases, and we start just feeling connected, comfortable in our body. The number of desire reduces, the number of needs, and the overall of purna state, the inner fullness, starts happening. So when you feel full from within, 
when the cup overflows, they start sharing. This is nice. how the masters operate. Nice. They don't just decide, oh, I'm going to become a master, I want to be famous around the world, travel right. around. It's not like that. They simply, by default, it just all happens because it overflows and you just really want to share that. You see how much people are lost in ignorance and, and suffering and pretending that they're fine. <laughs> and that those really pretenders like that. are the best, like, oh, I'm doing great, I'm superb. But you can see that it's just a mask. But it's, it's, not only is it a mask, but what we're saying here is, as you say, um, and you've, as you've just highlighted, Debbie, the benefits of yoga are far greater reaching than just the physical benefits. Yeah. Especially if you're talking about changing one's energy blueprint. I guess what you're saying, you know, psychologically speaking, you're, you're talking about changing one's uh, conscious way of being. Yes. The way they think, the way they process the world, the way they look at things. And is there a, um, a sense of almost refinement of the senses? Are the senses refined? You talked about the third eye. Do we have a third eye? <laughs> Can it be cultivated? Yes, yes, most definitely. And um, Agni Chakra is one of the most powerful uh, parts of our body. I mean, we can call it third eye, but it, this is the point where we start uh, going beyond the ego consciousness, right? And start to um, perceive things. And yeah. it's, not, it's not an easy process. So there's a push and pull you can imagine the orbit of the ego uh, world and then the orbit of the uh, universal consciousness and then when you start going in between these two orbits so you neither left this one nor you join that one you're kind of in between this is the the toughest part this is where the masters come in because they've treaded that path they've gone they achieved the breakthrough and they can help us and guide us through that tricky bit where we feel we have to become vulnerable because our heart is open we definitely shine more and then those who are in the lower energies, they want to pull us down. Right. So all, this thing ha all these things happen. It's not like it's a very smooth and easy journey. It never was, never will be. Right? Mm. So the greatest courage is required to actually rise above the, <laughs> the swamp, you know, <laughs> where right. all the frogs are together. So uh, it's not an easy thing and everybody has to struggle, uh, you know, churn the milky ocean, keep on yes. struggling. Yeah, the, the butterfly who is struggling to, to come to out, out of the out of cocoon. cocoon to build the wings. So but that means that struggle is far beyond the yoga studio. Exactly. Right? So yoga is actually one of the greatest um, aids in the process. But yoga is not like the... We say that yoga is the path and destination. The word yoga uh, means the practice of yoga, but it's also the state of yoga. Right? So we practice yoga to achieve the state of yoga. The state state of oneness. Right, and um, Patanjali, who is regarded globally and accepted as one of the forefathers of yeah, he has codified uh, all the codified of, yeah. of yoga, and he is obviously the author of the Patanjali Sutras, yes. uh, which describe an eightfold process as you describe. Yeah. But yet, he's also only referring back to the yoga that was described in the Bhagavad Gita, one of the oldest known spiritual treaties known to mankind at least five and a half thousand years ago yes. and even there Krishna is talking about bhakti yoga, sankhya yoga, dana yoga, karma yoga yes. um, what message would you give what, what, what wisdom could you share with people who are of different types one person may not like to do the yoga of the yoga studio, other people may not like to do yoga that's really deep thinking and other people may not like devotional what can one do to try to best assimilate yoga into their life, to embrace it into their life? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we have to first connect within and see what clicks, what attracts you, you know, then follow that thread. Uh, so, for example, if you are predominantly karma yogi, you will really just, you just want to go out there and serve. You want to put a smile on the faces of orphan children. Practical action. And, yeah, it's, so this is what, number one. And then, after all that is done, you just, if you spend a bit of time with yourself, the dhyana yoga happens because you're just contemplation. You're, ab you're just able to go into that state and right. just be in silence after all that. And uh, when we do acts of purity and love, unconditional love, not expecting anything, simply out there giving our love, our time, our ser service, um, big big change happens. But some people uh, really want to focus on the asanas more. And for example, what uh, uh, Iyengar did. I mean, it was extraordinary. He completely transformed his body, you know, and he, from a sick body filled with pain, he went into complete yogic body and he proved it was possible. So, um, but he surely was also doing a lot of service and bhakti and everything is there. So it's just a percentage wise, 
maybe you want to do slightly more of karma yoga, a bit of bhakti yoga, a bit of dhyana yoga, <laughs> of asanas. So it's just um, playing with the percentage of it. But um, in, in, in the end, we have to see what really attracts us. You know? So um, I definitely recommend that uh, if you don't feel like doing the stretches and exercises, at least uh, you could do a bit to um, strengthen your stomach muscles, stretch here a little bit, and just the basic stretches. So we have light yogic exercises, very light, you know? With time, you need, you need to move your uh, joints, you know? There's a lot of stiffness that comes into the body. So walk, <coughs> just walking is not enough. For example, the hip flexors, they get really tight. Psoas muscle responds strongest uh, to the stress. It's not just the shoulders, it's, it goes so into the, yeah. the pelvis. And right, it's a deep so muscle, psoas muscle, P S O A S. By oh the way, yeah. folks, you, we're talking about so, uh, here. connected with your limbic brain. So like all the deepest fears, they go right right in. into that psoas muscle. Yeah. <laughs> so it needs to be stretched, you know. And so just walking is not enough. I mean, uh, if you really try those stretches, you will see a big difference. And then if you have completely weak stomach muscles, your spine suffers. You know, so, so many people with back aches out there who are hearing this yeah, can benefit so from that. Their back ache could practice. be from the tight soles or could be from very weak uh, stomach muscles and wrong posture, uh, wrong way they climb the stairs. Uh, daily practice involves the uh, slight uh, forward tilt where they are tightening. <laughs> you know, so we only have the sedentary lifestyle now because there's so much out there online that's interesting and attractive. And we spend more and more time sitting yeah. and less time doing Which, anything. Tightens all those muscles. So at least you could do 15 minutes per day of light yogic exercises, sun salutations, for example, amazing sequence that covers the whole body. And I mean, this is like superb. And the beauty is, folks, this could be done in the comfort of your own homes. There are enough apps and technology can be used for good yes. by following something that is available so you can do the preliminary stretches yeah. and basic movements at home or of course attend a few classes until you're comfortable with the movement and I think a lot of people tend to do that they may not go to classes continuously but they'll learn enough that they can condense that into a 10 minute sun salutation and do it at home and that's a exactly. wonderful thing to do but let me ask you as we kind of close up I, I must ask you for all the spiritual aspirants out there everybody who's on a journey wanting to become more spiritual learn more about spirituality already on the path through whichever tradition it may be what wisdom can you share for the spiritual spirit what essential truths or lessons would you like to give to that person? well i'm 41 now and my journey as i said started pretty much at the age of 14 and um, i was searching a lot and i went through various trainings and methods and so it all boils down to uh, being authentic, being true to yourself. That's why I, I love Sai Baba because it's actually honoring the truth of your being. You, know, you need to have guts to live your truth. Like, I remember I, I used to work for Mercedes-Benz back in Middle East in Oman and I started developing thyroid gland problem because I was not living my truth. If I start speaking something about spirituality, they're like, ah, pff, you know, and then you feel like you're not able to express yourself. And I said, why am I doing this job? And I really do respect Mercedes-Benz cars and there's nothing wrong with the company. It's just that I don't, I don't vibrate with this. So the only reason why I'm there is because of the salary. And then I'm so miserable that I spend most of that money on shopping, on em uh, filling up the empty cup, but then that's just always empty. And then it becomes a cycle. <laughs> and most people do this. And so right. it, it's really asking yourself the cr crucial questions like, what am I doing here? Why am I here? What is it that I want to do? Understanding I'm a soul in a body, I'm going through an experience. Let me live my truth. You know, what, what really gives me the greatest joy? What is my passion? And um, like Monji says, you don't have to like really just leave your job, be uh, penniless right away. You can maybe develop that as a hobby and then gradually shift to that. Gradually shift. Uh, let's hobby. say, for example, you enjoy capturing <coughs> beautiful uh, moments through photo, photo camera. Well, you can first learn how to do it, do it as a hobby, then offer some of your photos at some web pages or some exhibitions or whatever. And if you really do it with a lot of love, you will be given that inexplicable moment of grace when the heavens open up to you and they give you the opportunity to express. So I really believe 
For me, God is this omnipresent field of supreme vibration and love, and it responds to our desires and wishes if, if they are noble, you know. And uh, all of us can bring something unique and beautiful here into the world. We can do it, but we need to have the guts to start living our truth. So start walking from where you're standing, uh, start making some changes in your life, and uh, it, it has to be something with a noble intention. Then definitely it's gonna open up for yeah. you. A couple of rapid fire questions for you, <laughs> rapid which, fire. That sounds right. which I've been very keen to <laughs> ask you. If Devi Mohan could acquire a superpower, could be a superhero and have a superpower, any superpower, what superpower would you want and what would you do with it? Well, it just immediately what came to my mind was uh, some, uh, I, I've seen this already in a, in a I've done a past life regression thing, but it was not a regression into a life. It was a connection with my higher self. Right. In that higher self moment, <laughs> I was on a top of a hill and I was emanating this immense golden light. And when I look somebody in the eyes, they see that light and they have this aha moment and they just remember who they are. Who they, they remember really the truth. true identity. So it was an amazing bliss that I experienced in that moment. And so I guess my superpower would be Transforming lives through my presence, through your presence. just my loving presence. Beautiful, that beautiful. That would be the highest of my wishes. <laughs> beautiful, such a wonderful answer. <laughs> if you had a time machine, mm -hmm. and you could go back and in, in back into the past, what key advice would the Devi Mohan sitting here give the Devi Mohan of twenty years? Ago? Yeah, 20 years ago I was Biljana Radonic, <laughs> so I was not Devi Mohan. And um, yeah, at that time I was uh, trying to be somebody, you know. So I was given advice, just recognize who you truly are and express that, you know. Be authentic, be courageous. And um, I think with uh, Mohanji's grace and his support, I dared to walk my path, you know, Your to path. Just, just be me. And whether anybody likes it or not, I'm me, you know, I'm authentic. Does, you know, you remind me, um, doesn't, <laughs> you're talking of authenticity, doesn't Krishna say in Bhagavad Gita, I think it's chapter 3, where he says, it is far better, it is, it, he says, it is highly dangerous to follow somebody else's path perfectly. Mm -hmm. It is far better to follow your own path, even though imperfectly, yes. because you're being authentic. It's so beautiful. And it's so liberating, you know. There's nothing to prove, nothing to hide. I don't, I don't think how I'm going to present something. Most of the time, I just come and I present. And like recently, I was at the Parliament of World Religions, and I loved it. I just loved it. I was just given a chance to speak, and I came. I didn't, I didn't have the slightest idea okay. what I'm going to say. And it's just so liberating, you know. You just stand there, and there's these people and this grand. The greatest interfaith event on planet and I yeah, happen to get to be there incredible. and just to speak you know and speak your truth and then so much beauty comes through you and you get this exhilarating feeling of expansion and inexplicable joy from it and I was just flying <laughs> I was all over the place you were in your essence because yeah and that's it so even if I die I know I, I've done that you know I've done that it doesn't matter how many people saw it, how many people benefit from it. I don't care. I just had the guts to do it. Yeah. While most people yeah. were just shuffling their papers. You could see them like one paper, another paper, then, <clears throat> then trying to be fit into a frame, you know? Just drop you the frames. That. Forget about the frames. Okay.